Well, it was seen there's some kind of campaign by the Talmudic Jewish lobby to try to get a lot of these apostate evangelicals to actually further deny scriptural conduct and what the scriptures, uh, specifically the New Testament, say about the uh, blasphemous false religion of Judaism. So this was on the uh, Jewish Telegraph Agency. Because a lot of these evangelicals already deny that you should preach the gospel to the Jews, try to convert them, try to turn them away from their false religion of Judaism. But this, I mean, there's a even a push to essentially try to get them to deny scripture even more by the uh, Talmudic Jewish lobby. But it says here on the Jewish Telegraph Agency, Christian churches are urged to act against anti-Semitism, including by scrutinizing their own practices. And by the way, the word anti-Semitism is just used to try to silence any kind of legitimate expressions of criticism of any aspect of Judaism or its blasphemous Babylonian Talmud. But, you know, because if you, if you criticize it, you're now some kind of neo-Nazi anti-Semite, which, again, the ironic thing about that is that it was always the Nazis that tried to censor free speech, as well as the communists who would censor free speech. But continuing on the article, a group of educators dedicated to solidarity between Christians and Jews is urging churches to take action against the growing prevalence of anti-Semitism in the United States and to reflect how their own, on how their own practices may be fueling hatred against Jews. We implore all churches to redouble their efforts to denounce anti-Semitism publicly as antithetical to the very essence of Christianity itself. It says the Council of Centers on Jewish-Christian Relations, which represents about 30 institutions working on interreligious understanding, said in a public statement issued last week. What about all the times that the uh, that Talmudic Judaism has persecuted Christians? Like, you know, you got Stephen, the first martyr, uh, stoned to death by the, by the original uh, Talmudic Judaic lobby back in the book of Acts chapter 7. He, he rebuked their false religion, and they stoned him. You know, but of course... They don't want to bring up that. But it says, uh, CCJR's statement calls on Christian clergy and educators not only to denounce anti-Semitism, but also examine how they might uh, inadvertently, uh, how they might be inadvertently promoting anti-Semitic ideas. Well, criticism of Judaism is just what the, what uh, Jesus Christ would do. In, uh, for example, Matthew 15, verse 1 to 9, Matthew 23, the apostles did it all through the book of Acts. You know, again, you got Stephen, the first martyr, criticizing Judaism in uh, Acts chapter 7. But apparently, I guess they're all just anti-Semites because they criticize the false religion of Judaism. The Apostle Paul in Titus chapter 1, verses 10 down to verse number 16. I guess he was just an anti-Semite himself, you know, even though he used to follow Judaism. But continuing on the article, it says, As students of history, we know that the roots of modern anti-Semitism and associated conspiracy theories grew out of Christian libels perpetrated against Jews in medieval Europe and out of centuries of Christian religious teaching for, of contempt for Jews. The statement says, now this is the problem, they're lumping in Roman Catholicism, which is a pagan, it's, it's just repackaged Greco-Roman paganism with selected truths from the Old and New Testament. Uh, as Christianity. Roman Catholicism is the furthest thing from Christianity. It's Mystery Babylon in uh, described in Gen uh, sorry, described in Revelation uh, verses 17 to 18. So yeah, Roman Catholicism is not Christian whatsoever. But uh, Christian says in the article, Christian theology has evolved since the Holocaust and many denominations have long disavowed anti-Semitic teachings, including the idea that Jews are responsible for killing Jesus and that he represents a negation of Judaism. Um, that's what the scriptures say. That, you know, it talks about in Acts 4, you can read in Acts 3, Acts chapter 5, Acts chapter 2. I mean, all throughout the Bible. You're, they're talking about, you know, ye men of Israel. You know, who you know talking when they're referring to Jesus, they say, whom ye slain. You know, uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 14 to 15 mentions, you know, uh, who you know when talking about the uh, Talmudic Jews who both killed the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the wording. In Matthew chapter 27, verses, I believe it's uh, verses 20 down to verse number 25, the Talmudic Jews openly say, you know, his blood be upon us and upon our children. Paraphrasing, of course, but uh, it's a scriptural fact. So by saying you're going to disavow that teaching, you're basically having, you're basically just disavowing scripture, what it says. But it says, uh, but the CCJR statement uh, says remnants of this problematic thinking can persist, requiring cautionary uh, caution from Christian leaders. Problematic thinking can persist. Yeah, it's what the scriptures say. So I guess I'm pro pushing problematic thinking or something like that. It's a bunch of garbage. I just go about what the scriptures say. But it says here in the article, uh, the group's letter follows initiatives from in, uh, some of the world's largest Christian denominations to address anti-Semitism and their liturgy and history. Earlier this year, the Episcopal Church announced that it would be uh, it would review pre-Easter readings to blame the Jews for the death of Jesus and offered an alternative to them. Again, it's what the scriptures say. So you're just basically denying scripture to cave in to the false religion of Judaism. Meanwhile, Pope Francis, well, that says it all. 
is restricted uh, uh, is restricted the use of Latin of the Latin Mass, a traditional liturgy that includes a prayer for the conversion of Jews, out of concern that it was being used uh, by those who did not accept the Catholic Church's 1965 statement declaring that Jews were not responsible for Jesus Christ's death. Well, oh wow, Roman Catholicism denying Scripture. That well, that certainly isn't a new thing. You know, again, Roman Catholicism is a satanic is is every bit as satanic as Judaism. It says he has condemned anti-Semitism and the Church of England recently, recently apologized to Jews for the anti-Semitic laws that led to their expulsion 800 years ago. Compromise, compromise, compromise to cave in to political correctness, essentially. But it's not surprising that the Pope is doing this because why? Well, Pope Francis uh, is head of the of Mystery Babylon, so it doesn't surprise me one bit. But the Talmudic Jewish lobby is at, at this point not only trying to fight against free speech, but trying to push against the clear teaching of the Scriptures and the New Testament in particular. That it was the Talmudic Jews who took responsibility for the the uh, crucifixion of Jesus Christ. You know. The word of God says what it says, and if someone doesn't like that, you can call it anti-Semitism. Okay, fine. If if that's if you think that's anti-Semitism, I guess the word of God would be anti-Semitic by your by your standards. So anyway, just wanted to point that out. It's a bunch of garbage, plain and simple. It's a bunch of just denial of the plain reading of Scripture. So don't don't be deceived. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.